Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip Tuesday. My name is Kristen Taruno and I'm one of the BCBAs here at ABC of NC and today I'm going to be talking to you all about first then contingencies and how to present them using a first then visual support. So first, let's take a peek at what it looks like. Uh, it's two boxes, first and then. What goes in the first box is a task to be completed and what goes in the then box is an item, activity, or interaction that's motivating. And the idea is that the item or activity in this then box is going to make completing the task in the first box more valuable. So here are just a few tips and thoughts on how to teach uh, the meaning behind a first then visual support. If you've been watching some of my other videos, you're probably gonna notice some similarities with teaching visual schedules and teaching weight. Um, so just keep that in mind. Things might start sounding familiar. Uh, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that your teaching trial should be short and relatively easy to start. And then we're going to increase the length and the difficulty as they're successful. So here's an example. An easy first then might include first I'm going to tickle you and then I'm going to blow some bubbles for you. Easy. I like tickles. I like bubbles. Good news. After you're presenting a series and practicing a bunch of these easy types of first thens, then you can increase the difficulty just a little bit. The first, uh, the task in the first box is gonna be something that's already in their repertoire, that's quick and easy, but not motivating. And what's in your then box is going to be a motivating item activity or interaction. So here's an example. First, I need you to throw this piece of paper in the trash, and then we're gonna take a walk. Quick and easy, relatively painless, something I really like. Practice a variety of those. Once they have a whole bunch of those under their belt, then you're going to be able to increase the difficulty even a little bit further to include uh, longer, more difficult, less preferred tasks to access preferred items, activities, and interactions. So here's an example. First, you're gonna do your math worksheet and then we're gonna have TV time. So those are just some examples of easy, moderate, and more difficult first bends. Once you're practicing using this visual support regularly, you're increasing the likelihood that when you pull this out during a naturally occurring opportunity, that the individual is going to be successful. So ultimately all these practice opportunities is when you're building the muscle, you're building the meaning of the support. Something else that you wanna make sure that you're doing is when they're completing the task in the first box that you're promptly delivering the item activity or action in the then box, real quick. Something else that you wanna keep in mind is when you're presenting first then contingencies. First then contingencies can sound a little bit like bribery and the difference is when you present the first then contingency. If you're saying, like to my son, we'll pretend. I'm telling him that it's time for math. I'm presenting the first then. Right off the bat, hey buddy, first it's time for math, then we're gonna get TV. That's the right way to present the first then. Right off the bat, you're gonna present it. You are not waiting until he protests or gives you a hard time to, pre pre to present the first then. So, if I call from across the room and say, hey Leo, it's time to do this math sheet, and he tells me, I don't wanna do the math sheet. I hate math, math's dumb. Okay, and then I pull out the first then, now I have crossed the boundary into bribery town. That's what we wanna avoid. So ideally, you're going to present this right off the bat, not after the individual is engaging in problem behavior. Okay, RBTs have made another video model for you all on how to present first then contingencies using the visual support. So follow the link and I will see you all next week. Stay well. Bye.